How's it going everyone? Welcome to my presentation and all the research that I've collected on Walgreens Boots Alliance, or Walgreens for short, um, it's just Walgreens, <laughs> WBA. So yeah, this is an attractive business at an attractive price. Um, we actually got the opportunity here to buy under $40 a share. Um, yeah, as you look at the all-time chart, uh, it looks very attractive, like it looks like it does want to go um, to the... Uh, far right up into the far right and I like stocks I like to do that and I like stocks that looks like they're keeping that trend pattern but they're um, you know at an advantageous uh, downward value kind of point and hopefully it'll return back to mean um, you know if this is like you know a true stock chart that does go up into the right and it has those phases where it goes overvalued uh, back down to despair and then back to the mean so this is definitely in some type of despair when you look at it right here um, you know, this does look like there is some stuff wrong with the business, like this is scaring some investors off, and we'll go into that in a bit, and there are some things, some critical things that I will be talking about. But if you invested in Walgreens in uh, August of 1982, you would have had uh, about 77x to your money. Yeah, so uh, this is an attractive business at an attractive price right now. Just looking at it, one of the first things that I do notice looking at this is that the um, last 12 month PE right here has gotten to an abusively low level. Uh, 6 point, uh, 6.61 is the price to earnings currently on uh, Walgreens Boots Alliance. And man, for honestly like such a stellar company, and we'll go into why it's a stellar company in a bit. Um, at 6.61 PE, that's just what really like a lot of the intrigue and a lot of my interest in this business just kind of does revolve around um, that. But there's a lot of other things that I do want to talk about. You know, I always, like to preach on this channel that price to earnings will not tell you a full story it'll just give you like a foundation to like look into a bigger picture um so some other things we got going on i do want to talk about is this uh price of sales this is like a historical low uh 0.25 price of sales for the business um some other things that you're getting the business at at this price today um the book value is it's at an all-time low uh the price of book value uh, is at an all-time low at 1.28 here, and it's just uh, at an inflection point where it's just at one of the cheapest it's all ever been here in uh, 2022 for Walgreens, um, and it does uh, attract a lot of my interest. So Walgreens, they do 80, about 85% of their business in the United States, but it's actually a global empire. Um, they just have ownership of so many different things and so many different brands. Uh, you can see here they uh, staff 315,000 team members. Um, they own the consumer brands Walgreens. They own Boots. They own Dwayne Reed. They own the number seven beauty company Benavides in Mexico and Ahu Ahuama. <laughs> I never heard of this business. Um, yeah, they own a Chilean business, which is incredible. They have a uh, incredible exposure all across uh, America, and um, yeah. They have uh, healthcare-focused investments in China um, and the U.S., um, just the different healthcare uh, investments. Um, one I wanted to talk about is 25% um, ownership in Amerisurgis Bergen, and this is even after the sale that they did recently to do even more stock buybacks. Um, they've been doing a lot of stock buybacks, and we will go into that. Um, but yeah, you know, 25% ownership in Amerisurgis Bergen, that's a, um, a significant business. Uh, Marisource Berg and ABC is their stock ticker if you want to look them up. Um, the estimated uh, worth of that position that they hold is $7.5 billion. Um, and Walgreens Boots Alliance is $33.7 billion market cap. Now other things, obviously, um, the, meat the meat and potatoes here of the business would be, you know, it's 13,000 plus retail locations. It's, you know, that are present in nine countries. Um, you know, the the army of team members, uh, 35,000 pharmacists nearly, um, which is uh, a large uh, workforce of uh, the pharmaceutical uh, necessities of America. Uh, this is a Dow 30 stock, I do have to throw it out there. It's a very mature, mature business. Um, you know, 9,000 drugstores and uh, over 4,000 of these uh, retail locations are uh, international so yeah incredible business and i just want to mention that emerson spurgeon just like a nice little piece of that i feel like not a lot of people talk about it, it doesn't really get uh mentioned enough so uh walgreens you know the price action has been going kind of down um essentially the gist of it what they've been battling is uh inconsistent eps as well as um
the turnaround, okay. So yeah, Walgreens, you know, got hit with like EPS issues in 2018, um, had a very, very sharp price action decline. As I pointed out earlier, you, you know, you see the business fall from a tremendous high that it was holding around the circa 2015 era, um, where a lot of pharmaceutical uh, retailer stocks like CVS and whatnot were also at uh, all time high around that time. They bring on Rosalind Brewer recently. Um, Walgreens with Lawrence, they bring on Rosalind Brewer, a former Starbucks CEO, bringing all that retail experience into the business, and she's been working on this turnaround. One of the other um, key things they've been doing recently is they've been uh, working with Village MD, um, Village Medical, and they've been uh, opening up uh, stores, uh, conjoint stores at conjoint locations. And they're trying to kind of just be like a catch-all service for, um, you know, if you need to go to like a urgent care, if you need to go get a quick primary care service, like if you need to get a physical for school or for a sport or something of that nature, um, if you need to go get like a referral to a specialist, um, all these are primary care services. And sometimes I'm um, going to the actual doctor's office, you can go like further out and be more of an inconvenience. Um, as well as it can be more expensive like going to these actual specialist kind of like primary care doctors um, Village Medical and Walgreens are kind of trying to um, Catch a little bit of a business opportunity there and there could be a little bit of a niche kind of uh, um, Specialized value doctor that kind of like uh, breaks the norm of the American health care system because I don't know healthcare is very expensive especially in the United States so <clears throat> if they do figure something out where this is uh, very functional and does work it'll have um, tremendous upsides for the business um, but yeah I, I don't really look at this as something where like it has to work for this like stock to do well I mean this stock is an empire on as in and of itself that trades a value so if this works out for the business this would be tremendous this would uh, create a lot of like synergistic uh, revenue growth um, Walgreens hasn't had a lot of organic revenue growth. Now, when I say organic, what I mean is um, non through acquisitions, how Walgreens has really kind of sustained their revenue growth. Uh, so if this conjunction with Village MD works out, it could create some synergistic revenue growth. Walgreens is a company, they've been struggling to find organic revenue growth. Now, when I say organic revenue growth, what I mean is, I mean revenue growth that comes from the business itself. I don't mean coming from acquisitions. A lot of uh, Walgreens revenue growth has come through acquisitions in recent years. So some of the current turmoils, uh, I want to really point out how inflation some a number on this business. You see how their operating margins have really dropped here. Um, they've dropped to around the 2% area in recent times from uh, historical in the last 10 years, they've hovered around uh, 4%. So um, trying to get those numbers back to 4%, I think that would create a lot of uh, alpha in the stock. Um, you know, when investors start seeing that trending back the way where they want it. But yeah, as you can see here, their total revenues more or less have stagnated around this number here. As soon as they can get past some revenue stagnation, I think that'll be another thing that really kind of like starts creating uh, alpha for the stock. Um, you know, those good earnings reports, really, when you just start seeing those good earnings reports over time, that really will do a number for this business in, the, in a good way. So there's no buyers right now. There's no momentum in the stock. Um, you know, this thing could trade out of value for forever, pretty much. And we never get the reward we want as investors. That could totally happen. Um, that's one of the inherent risks of the business. Now, depending on your investing style, this is like a really bad thing. Um, you really just kind of want to like invest and kind of like get your money soon thereafter, um, as well as like not having that like downside risk. Um, some investors are like that, you know, with the stop loss and the, and the you know, quick gain and the maybe like six month outlook or something of that nature. It's a good swing trade. That's probably not Walgreens. Um, Walgreens is more of like a long term investment. Um, but as I said, you know, at a time with no buyers, no momentum, that's bad depending on your investing style. Some de investors like to come in when, you know, it's just bones in a barren wasteland. And that's when they start just amassing like a large position. Depends on your investing style. Um, that could be, um, you know, the, the the type of investor I just mentioned. That could be a investor who really likes to amass Walgreens. And that's kind of what I'm starting to do at these prices. I, I you know, I somewhat in that way as an investor. Um, I do like to play both sides of the coin, but I do majority kind of like to come in when like it's a pot of land with not a lot going on here. And then I'm there. I'm not there when like things are starting to get going. I'm uh, normally there when it's uh, really quiet. And uh, regular stagnation in the last five years, as I said, that's really kind of 
and and as well as the inconsistent EPS that's really just drawn a lot of people like negative sentiment towards the stock. Um, so you've had mixed growth, as I said, like you've had an organic growth, growth issue, but you've had like good return on investment and return on equities from Walgreens. You've had good uh, ability to kind of like run the business kind of like an investment empire, like, you know, with Boots. And then they've uh, done a strategic overview of Boots, determined like they want to keep it for a longer term. They did, uh, they own, um, you know, ABC. So it's like, there's a lot going on at Walgreens where they've done well with investing. Um, but yeah, uh, organic growth, they just can't find it, especially at a time right now with inflation and stuff, those retail stores, you know, battling like inflation as well as things like, you know, theft issues and whatnot, like, uh, just kind of struggling, just kind of struggling, like turn profits, um, really find like an organic kind of like growth niche right now. They're having uh, margin issues because of inflation. Walgreens has a really big presence, but I really do feel like it has little to no moat as well as Morningstar does have it as the no moat rating. Uh, I feel like this is very true because there's so many different other uh, retail pharmacy uh, type companies out there with CI or uh, CVS, some of those nature. And, um, you know, I really don't get the sense that Walgreens is doing anything particularly special with their business. And that's something they're trying to like work around with like Village MD. And they do have a uh, store turnaround coming. Um, they've been doing some store turnarounds, uh, store overhauls. Um, the stores are kind of like dated looking. I don't know if you ever walked into Walgreens, it just kind of looks a little dated. So yeah, they desperately need to overhaul. And I think that's one of the things that's keeping them at like a no moat right now is they haven't done that like mass overhaul of their like 13 plus thousand locations. Um, only a few of those locations have actually gotten the overhaul out of those 13,000. It certainly is not the majority. So the operating margins are currently around 2% and that's just not gonna be good for this business. They're historically around 4%. Uh, even better would be around like 6% more ideally for this business. So, you know, um, it's just really, really bad for them currently. Um, but I don't believe that this high inflation environment will last forever. There will be a time where it does turn around um, and the inflation starts to reverse to the other side. Total assets over total liabilities is okay, but the current assets over liabilities is below one. And I, what I see as far as opportunity wise, well, finally getting the business below $40 a share. I've been looking at that. That's kind of been like a critical like support, kind of like threshold, kind of like rarely seen on the um, historical five year stock chart. It sometimes it's dipped below 40 and it's quickly recovered. So when it dips around this area, I'm really interested in like accumulating the business. Another thing I'm seeing is that in the last five years, they've actually done a stock buyback significant to the point where they've lost 20% of the outstanding shares of the business. Now, normally when you see a stock buyback of this magnitude, the business starts, you know, going up, up into the moon because the shares inherently do become more valuable um, because the company is swallowing them up and they're disappearing. Now, that hasn't been the case with Walgreens Boots Alliance because as I said, just, you know, with things with like the EPS difficulties they had, the inconsistencies, um, how they were really bad in one year and then they recovered another year and then they were really bad again. Um, things like that, like all that has really like drawn investors um, and just the market, Wall Street as a whole, to really hate the business. And <laughs> when it's buying back uh, a fifth of the share and the stock price still goes down 50%, the stock price is still going down as they're buying back shares, that's making like an incredible value arbitrage opportunity. Um, because if it were to go up in price as the shares are being bought back, that would just be everything being priced in like as it's happening. And um, you know, if Walgreens does do the organic recovery of the business and becomes like, you know, um, the business that it could be, then it's gonna have a huge, huge growth to the upside because there was this five year time period where the price got slashed in half and this a fifth of the shares disappeared. So those people who bought those shares, they could be, well well rewarded and that you know i'm trying to just give you guys like the gist that this is some of the things that i'm seeing um and you know these are some of the other like positives to the business right here too you got the price of earnings that is too low as i said a 6.6 .6, that is just for this business of this magnitude with all these you know retail locations you know it, it is just a core foundation of the american retail pharmacy um we're almost like a worldwide retail pharmacy um it is just too low 6.6 .6, that is just too low so for I, I think that is great value for ownership in a retail uh, pharmacy empire this is a dow 30 
uh, U.S. economy essential. I think a great example is from um, Robert, the popular investor on YouTube. He he had a great um, he had a great uh, write up about Walgreens, and he mentioned how take a hit of that water. In the past couple of years, Walgreens has had millions and millions of people show up to their pharmacies as CV19 vax sites. Now these people showed up to Walgreens with you know Walgreens did paid zero dollars zero zero dollars to get them into their doors and get them into their stores and you know if even like one to two percent of those customers were like never been into a walgreens before and they were like oh you know i'm gonna consider going to the walgreens in the future that would be thousands and thousands and thousands of customers who now want to go to walgreens that walgreens spent zero dollars on acquiring for the long term that is kind of impressive I think that there's a possible 100% gain from a uh, PE expansion alone. Um, like for example, PE expansion to about 13 to 15 alone would certainly, certainly, certainly double this stock. Um, so just picture that, you know, just kind of picture like WBA from like $39 to like, you just kind of like wake up one day and <laughs> obviously like years down the line, maybe like two years, one year down the line, probably more realistic, like four to five. Uh, and it is you know it is around like 85 dollars or it's around like 90 dollars like that's possible because like this price of earnings is just kind of like artificially low now you're acquiring a five percent dividend uh, as you're owning this business it's a very 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 stable dividend us dow 30 stock paying a dividend uh you know it is uh likely a stable or growing dividend and the reason why is because it's so strongly backed up by the cash flows of this business you know this business has so many different retail locations it owns so many different brands it is bringing in the cash flow the cash flow is not so much a problem with the business and it will pay you that dividend as you own it so 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 reassuring to know you know once again just highlighting they've lost a fifth of their shares outstanding since 2017 just really points to you like you know how how valuable is a share of WBA really right now? There is a huge healthcare and demographic tailwind right now um, happening in the world. There is a huge healthcare and demographic tailwind in the United States as well as the world right now. Um, a lot of this has to do with the boomer generation. Uh, the generation has a lot of the um, liquid wealth that are uh, aging, aging, aging into um, the older kind of like uh, proponents of society. And that this is the proponents of society specifically that demand on healthcare the most. So, you know, as the boomers kind of like evolve into that proponent of society, um, there's gonna be a huge uh, healthcare demographic tailwind. And Walgreens is right there, you know, Walgreens is in that cusp of we're in the healthcare slash, you know, retail consumer kind of like uh, part of uh, the economy. So, just kind of like something for the longer term, I think could be happening also WBA could be bought out I mean you have to consider that the business trades you know below 35 billion market cap today what's well, not to say a private investor comes in splashes you know 50 to 60 billion on the company maybe more ideally like 70 plus billion and um, you know those uh, shareholders get rewarded for the immediate you know that would be a reward of like i don't know an immediate 60 plus percent to the upside or something of that nature i recently lost money on walgreens boost alliance and i was ecstatic now um those localized dips at walgreens were kind of like jitters around 40 dollars i've been picking up shares there in the last couple years um walgreens is the biggest holding in my roth ira and um i invest very like safely kind of like in a different kind of way in my roth ira than i would in any other uh, one of my accounts a very dividend dividend uh, heavy focus but you know as I've been kind of like uh, acquiring shares in all accounts on all these dips uh, there's actually recently a time where I was like oh I'm certainly selling off my all my Walgreens now that happened um, in this like kind of like April to May kind of like area where um, you know a company that I also really really love and I really 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 want to acquire more ownership of which is Alphabet which is you know also kind of like the owner of Google um, who owns the website that you're watching this video on right now um, they uh, fell 25%, 26%. And um, in that same time frame, my Walgreens shares, uh, you know, from the localized dips as I'd been acquiring them, had only fallen uh, less than 5%, you know, as you see here on the chart. Um, 
So, you know, a 3% drop. So I gladly flushed those Walgreens shares and just like bought all these other businesses, including Google. And I was ecstatic. I was so happy with how that trade went. I was so happy, so, so happy with how that investment had played out. I like to like, you know, wait 30 days, like as you know, I'm selling and buying stuff because of like wash sale rules. But you know, 30 days have well and much gone by since then. And now I'm looking back at the price of Walgreens. So I'm like, hey, I'm back in, you know what I'm saying? Because this business, I really don't see like much downside on it. It's a low beta stock. Now, what I mean by that is, you know, the S&P 500, obviously, from April to the end of May, dropped a considerable amount, as well as Google did drop a considerable amount. But the, the Walgreens only dropped a couple percentages, and that's because it is kind of like a safety down 30 stock, uh, lower beta. It doesn't really like uh, associate its uh, the way it trades with the S&P 500 so much. It kind of like rise to the beat of its own drum more so now as you can see it did kind of lose some of that uh downside a little later but it didn't go as fast as the s p 500 did and and that was just kind of like walgreens being weird and wacky um and finally breaking like you know uh below 40 dollars and and whatnot as it has today where i'm really especially starting to like acquire some of the business around these levels so yeah that's one of the things i love about walgreens i think that the um so yeah, you know, I was ecstatic to have this opportunity where I sold a low beta stock uh, that I owned, a uh, low beta business uh, that I owned uh, for 3%. And then I acquired more of a business that I owned that had recently just dropped 26%. So, you know, me uh, with my newly acquired cash from the Walgreens sale, as well as with you know my cash position i was able to go in heavily and buy up you know alphabet around the like 100 dollars mark and i you know i was just thrilled i was so thrilled that i was like oh my god this money i lost on walgreens boost alliance this is amazing because i just had more cash to like buy up all these other businesses that had recently dropped so so much and it was just like a great opportunity and i was just so so thankful to walgreens boots alliance for you know being a low beta stock and really not dropping much just being you know resilient and um it is kind of like sometimes like a flight safety stock so in these times where um the rest of the market especially the tech market can be dropping so so heavily um this is a business that really kind of like diversifies out those things for you and it'll have that lower beta and it, it might not like have that drastic price action at a time where so much of the other rest of the uh, fortune 500 as well as other expanded markets would be having such such drastic price action um but you know that goes as well back to the thing that you know sometimes you normally just kind of see with the um dow jones index as well as the s p 500 index sometimes s p is just a little more drastic and the dow jones will just be kind of more relaxed at times so here around september of 2020 around 31 ish dollars there was pretty much like a figurative bottom for the stock and i just really do not believe that it will go below 31 dollars that would push this business like below like a six price to earnings and ah, just doesn't check out it just doesn't check out in the fundamentals of how i'm viewing things um as well as i do want to point out here it does kind of look like it's prepping for a macd cross in the longer term this is the five-year chart once again and um you know as soon as it just really starts breaking like these moving averages boom it's like it's it's often it's to the races um i think it will have a moment like where it goes to these like all-time highs like it did off this earnings report here you know around uh late kind of like late 2021 early 2022 but, um, you know, hopefully it just like has that breakout and it'll like hold. Um, that's one of the huge things this business needs. It needs to just have the buyers really come in and just like hold the business up. So yeah, like uh, super interesting, but yeah, I just really, this bottom, I just don't see this bottom in the longer term. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like this bottom looks really pretty sturdy and intact. And uh, that's what I'm saying. I think that this is one of the like safer stocks in my portfolio, super well backed up by, um, buy earnings uh pays that dividend and i think this bottom's intact you know what i'm saying so i i think that the um expanded downsides are uh pretty low because i think at most this would drop from around 39 to like 31 and uh i don't think it'd go any further down from that and as far as how far up it could go i think it could be like a hundred dollar plus stock because you know a lot of those fundamentals are intact um and the business owns so much and uh has so many different has so many different arms and so many different things there's so much different consensus that Walgreens is undervalued. I mean, you could find so many different like Walgreens write-ups uh, nowadays. And um, uh, this is just one from like Morningstar. Uh, they have it at a fair value estimate of uh, $48. And I agree that it is uh, moderately undervalued. 
um, you know, at a current uh, price of under $40 per share. In conclusion, I like the stock $40 or below. That $31 uh, floor, I think is very much intact. Um, it is a safe dividend backed up very much so by its cash flows of its uh, very sturdy businesses. It to me when I look at it is almost like a true cigarette butt style Ben Graham value stock. If you don't know Benjamin Graham, he is the author of um, The Intelligent Investor. It is one of the staple value investor books. I would certainly recommend checking it out. Essentially what cigarette butt investing is, is it's buying mature companies that look like they're they're priced at a dollar, but when you look at the business, you can model it out and that it's worth a dollar fifty or two dollars to you. And it's only one dollar that it's trading at. So for every one dollar, you know, you spend buying shares, you're like, hmm, in like five years, I should be rewarded two X. But you know, it's cigarette butt investing, so it is buying mature companies. That's the idea of it. Is Benjamin Graham really like the idea of having predictable cash flows and I don't know the walgreens to me seems to have a stagnation problem for cash flows but if they can hit you know maybe four percent revenue growth or something that would be amazing for the business amazing i can see myself selling uh with a worst case at a small loss if i ever just want cash for anything for anything literally anything could be buying uh another high conviction stock that i have that just dropped like you know another thing like google, like the google example like it dropped 25 percent or whatever um I can see myself selling at a worst case scenario at a small loss if I just want cash. And that's like the worst case scenario for me. Uh, this is kind of like a cash-like position to me. Sometimes when I just don't know like anything else to buy, I buy Walgreens because I know that it is low beta. I know that the upside is coming for it. I just don't know when. And I know it will pay me that 5% dividend along the way. And I know that the um, the downside is very, very low. As I said, you know, when the market turned bearish April, May, um, it really only dropped like 3 to 5% in that time. So, you know, I, I, I really just kind of like having some um, money in Walgreens because I think the upside will be there eventually. I just don't know when. And, you know, that's one of the things about the uh, the market. And, you know, no one really no ever knows when um, it's impossible to time. Uh, it's kind of like a cash like position to me. I'm not too worried about like the value of this changing drastically overnight or anything. It's very like predictable business, uh, true cigarette, uh, but uh, Ben Graham value stock. Uh, yeah, um, I love it. So some uh, Warren Buffett quotes to finish up here. Uh, rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, don't forget rule number one. And I think that really just plays into the thing I'm talking about, how this is really just kind of like a low downside uh, value stock. I really do think it trades at that drastic of a value at this time today. And that that technical floor of 31 is pretty, I mean, that's pretty, sheesh, that thing bounced. The other quote, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. Um, I think that just kind of goes into like the 5% dividend that this stock holds that is More propped up by um, the cash flows of the business. Um, so, you know, that that dividend, I really think it'll just be stable or grow. Um, it's very, very sturdy dividend. And so I don't mind having it in my Roth IRA. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. I'm the Zoomer Value Investor. Um, this is my equity research presentation. I will do many more of these in the future. And I have done many more in the past. So uh, please check them out. Um, appreciate you guys for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Take care. See ya.